Hi all, I'm Upasna from Edureka and today I shall be discussing all the charts you need to build effective reports on the Power BI desktop. This session will take you through the various Power BI desktop charts and most importantly, when is it more appropriate to use them. We'll be going in order with which these charts are present in the desktop app. So without any further ado, let's get started. So first of all, this is my data set. I've already imported the objects into my model. I think I should explain where this data set comes from because this looks pretty morbid with all the bombs and weapons. I assure you this is no real life data. So I hope most of you have heard of if not played the game of Counter Strike Geo. For those who haven't, it's one of those first person shooter games where you go around killing a bunch of your friends. It's great. Some good clean fun, right? But the best part about it is that all the data you've generated on the game is available through an API. So I've acquired these data sets using various gamer tags and it has an entire history of how many minutes I've played, what weapons I've been using, what maps I've been playing on, how many I've killed, how often I've been shot, all this great data. And I thought it would make for a great demo. So let's start with the charts. So first of all, I'll be creating a basic bar graph or a column graph with this for that you can use any of these given stacked bar charts, column charts, any of these, which wouldn't really matter because we are just using one case. This is basically because I want to show you guys what you can do and how you can transform these charts into its most effective form. So let's take a column chart. Now I'll be using this other data set which I also got from the CSGO. It's a player's data set which has a 20 players count, the kills, how many times they've been shot, the latitude and longitude from where they've been playing, etc. etc. So it's pretty simple actually. All you have to do is drag a column and drop it here on the field. What you can also do is you can drag the same column tab and drop it right into your graph. There you have it. Now there are a bunch of interesting things you can do with it. For example, I would like to change the color saturation according to the number of absolute kills. So green being good and red being bad. As you can see, this player number 20, despite having the best KD ratio, does not necessarily have the best absolute number of kills. So you can do a lot of cool stuff like this with the Power BI. Let's move on to our basic stacked and clustered charts. Now this entire column gives you bar and column charts. Now they are of two types mainly. One is the stacked chart and one is the clustered chart. I'll be showing you the difference between the both. Now first of all, I'm taking the stack chart. Here I'm taking a bar chart. As you can see, it's horizontal instead of vertical. On the axis, I'll be taking whether the bomb is planted or not. It's a common axis. So it's basically in a true and false situation. In the legend, I'll be taking the weapon type. So the legend is where you can specify and allot a color to each category. And in the value, I'll be obviously putting down a count. And there you have it. As you can see, the rifle has been used the most immediately followed by the pistol. Now, if I had to represent the same data using a clustered chart, this is what it'll look like. I'll use a clustered column chart here and I'll drag and drop the same data, which I did for the previous chart. So basically you use both these charts when we compare different cases, depending on the same two parameters. The stack charts are where you compare things as parts of a whole, but a clustered chart is where you do the same thing, but in separate bars. So with that, let's move on. Next we have our line and area charts. So these are the charts which usually show growth but you can also use an area chart to show volume in some cases. Here I'll be finding out the tick rate by plotting tick against the second. On the axis we'll take the second stab and in the values we'll take the count of tick. So for those who have a doubt, tick rate is basically the number of times your game refreshes in a second. For people who do competitive gaming, a good tick rate would be 128. As we can see, if we calculate the slope of this graph, it's 128.48 right here. We can plot the same thing using an area graph. As you can see, the graph looks similar, but it gives us an idea of the area shaded under it. It gives us an idea of the volume. 
So with that, let's move on to our next chart. So here I'll be using a combination chart as the name suggests. It's a combination between the bar chart and the line chart. And you can use it the same way as we did the previous charts. So on the shared axis, I'll be pulling down the players. On the column values, I'll be putting the KD ratio, or let's just put the absolute number of kills. And the line values, I'll be putting the KD ratio. As you can see, it's pretty similar to what we had inferred in our column chart. Another interesting chart here is the ribbon chart, which is like an area chart, but it shows data with respect to the maximum measure. So let's try that out as well. Now on this, I'll be plotting, let's say, the weapons used in the number of rounds. So let's bring the round to the common axis. We'll categorize the colors according to the weapon type. And then we'll bring the count of weapons to the values. See how intuitive this is, because when I just dragged the weapons value to the value field, but the count it's selected on its own. So there we have it. We have the combination chart as well as the ribbon chart. As you can see, as we had inferred before, the rifle has been used most. And by just touching on each of these colors or any part of the graph, you can find out the absolute information regarding the bar. Next up, we have another one of our very common charts. You've probably all seen this one before. It's a pie chart. It's a big circle cut into pieces. Can't really miss it. A donut chart is essentially the same thing, except for that it has a smaller circle cut out in the middle, turning the filled pie into a hollow donut. It's a visual preference mainly, but there is a key difference between both of them. Let's start with the pie chart. In the legend, I'll be putting the weapon and in the values also, I'll be putting the count of weapon. I'll be doing the same thing for a donut chart as well. Closer to make it look better. So now go ahead and look at the pie chart. Notice how you look at it. Chances are your eyes go straight to the center, at least at first. You view the pie chart in its entirety because pie charts are filled to the center. And here's a donut chart. Because donut charts are hollowed out, there is no central point to attract your attention. So where do your eyes go instead? If you're like most people, your eyes travel around the circumference of this donut chart. You judge each piece according to its length. As a result, you can also think of a donut chart as being a stacked bar graph which has been curled around itself. So essentially, we use donut charts for its readability and the pie charts for percentage breakdowns. So next we have the tree maps which serve the same purpose but according to the hierarchy. Let's plot the same thing. Let's just plot the weapon type. There we go. With that, let's move on to the maps on BI. Now we can be using a number of maps here. The field maps here are where you can show data density on certain states, but we'll be using the regular map because we don't honestly have so much data. So we'll be plotting where the players come from, latitude at the latitude, longitude at the longitude. For that, you'll have to categorize the latitude and the longitude as latitude and longitude in the data view. So we can also do a bunch of other things with it, like we can change the size according to the count. We can change the size of the bubbles. As you can see, wherever there's a concentration of more players, you can see the bubble is larger. You can also change the color saturation. Let's change the color saturation according to the absolute KD ratio. There you can see green being good, red being bad again. You can do something really, really similar with another tool here, which is the ArcGIS map, the latitude, the longitude, the size will be according to the count, and the color could be according to, let's say, absolute kills. There we go. You can also change the colors if you like, if you go to this formatting tab over here, the background, border, lock aspect, a bunch of different things. Another thing worth noting is that here, MSBI, this uses Bing's map engine, so it's very precise. That's also why it takes some time to plot. Next, we have funnel charts. So basically, this shows stages in progress. This is really cool. Let's 
change the color saturation while i'm here let me also explain the slicer to you people basically a slicer slices the data according to how you need it according to a certain field suppose i'm slicing data according to the absolute number of kills here you can actually control the data visualization from both the sides you can see the absolute number of kills in each bar between the 61st and the 104th kill so that's basically how a slicer works you can use it on maps your pie charts you can basically use it on any other chart that you want to so now with the visualizations we've used so far these have been visualizations which are used to compare values across different fields but to create power bi reports sometimes you only want to show a single metric just so you can track as it changes over time so here are a few different visuals that do it so gauges are great if you want to show progress towards a particular target like so by default you can always see double the amount of the amount shown here but you can obviously go change it here you can go you can change the data labels you can change the gauge axis you can change the call out value the lock aspect a bunch of different things you can also add other fields here like minimum maximum or the target so that's one thing another thing we can use is the card this one here you can also use a multi level card but this is a single row card so this is the card which just shows the numeric representation as text by default we use units to trim down the number but we can also use the formatting tab to change how it shows the number so you can do a bunch of really smart things with it like you can use the measure and ask msbi to return a string moving on so all these numbers lend themselves to showing kpis where you've got a particular value and a target you're working towards the great thing about this kpi is that it shows you an indicator and a number as well as a trend over a period over time you can control your goals right here again back to the formatting tab there is the goals bar here there's the goal and distance you can control the trend axis you can change the indicator and how it displays the units and so on and so forth now along with these charts power bi also has some tabular visualizations to look at your data for example i'll bring the table over here and i'll start adding fields to this let's say you can just go on adding tables that you want to you can just go on adding as many fields as you want and it'll keep giving you a total similarly you have the matrices here now i'll be creating a very simple 2 by 2 matrix say the rows could be the weapons and the columns could be the weapon types and the values could be your count a thing to notice here is when you add another field you do not get repeated values hence you get the absolute total from both sides with that we've got just one last visual left i would only like to address this one as it deserves a session of its own now if you're into data science you might be familiar with something called the r this is a really common application used to do deep analytics and statistics it is also a great visualization platform so msbi allows us to integrate with r So it basically means you can get your Power BI file over to R, get visuals to run, and bring it back to the desktop and use it like any other chart. With that, I conclude my session. So if you like this session, kindly like and subscribe to us. If you have any queries or want more videos on the Power BI desktop, tell us in the comment section below. Thank you and have a great day ahead. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning.